Well, the World Cup, the Rugby World Cup is 38 days away. And as we build up to the quadrennial showpiece, we will be having a once a week rugby focused interview. This week following a historic defeat to Argentina and now the South African Rugby Union having to defend criticism around transformation and racism, we chat about the Springboks and South Africa, a team that were a week ago ranked second in the world, today ranked fifth. We're now joined by Tando Manana, former player and rugby analyst. A very good morning and welcome to Morning Live. Morning to you, Valen, and to your viewers as well. Okay, I, heard, I saw a tweet from the Minister of Sport and Recreation. Yeah. Panic buttons, panic buttons. Is it time to hit the panic buttons? Look, it's not something I would expect from uh, Fiki Lembalula at this stage. I think he's been very quiet throughout, you know, the SA Rugby tenure as well as Hena Kamea's tenure. So I think maybe he expected us, uh, you know, to walk over Argentina. And guess what? A team that made 11 changes comes in our own backyard and trounces us, uh, you know, convincingly. I mean, they, they bossed us throughout. The line-out scrums, you name it, collision, breakdown. Where did South Africa win? Nothing. They didn't win anything. Even the try scored by Brian Abana, that is just a mere consolation try for South Africa. So, I mean, if you look at the score, then 37, 25 people will say, maybe it was those who didn't watch, but those who certainly watched it all agree that, uh, you know, uh, Heine Kamea and his troops are at a crossroads. What do you make of the scrumming? Because obviously that's something that mm. has now mm. been brought to the fore. And mm. I'm, I'm always... I always find it quite difficult to really just pick out one or two areas. Yeah. You know, often it's the referee yeah. against South Africa. That's always been a theme after big games or losses that really surprise us. But we are going to have our scrumming coach, Peter yeah. Zavillia, is going yeah. to approach uh, international referees to actually find out how they're actually calling the scrums. How do you understand it? Look, I think for me, you have a Johan van Graan, who's the forward coach. You have a technical uh, scrum advisor in Peter de Villiers. Uh, and uh, you find that you have a, a squad uh, that was outboxed at scrum time because we, we, everyone knows Argentinians are good scrummagers. So you've got to prepare in hindsight very well. And for you to throw in a Vincent Koch, uh, thinking that he will continue with the form that he showed at super rugby level, it just shows you that when you go to test rugby, it's a different and it's a big step up. So, Tando, you saying that Romain Point actually did stick to the laws of rugby and did call those scrums correctly on Saturday? Look, for me, I think, I mean, we've, he's refereed about six games where we've won three, we've lost three. He's done exceptionally well in terms of his understanding of the laws. But there's two things that one has got to look at. At one stage, there was two rugby balls on the field where he stopped play and he said that one, you only need one ball to continue. But then when the try was scored by Imhoff, uh, I mean, there were still a lot of medics around that allowed the try. So I think what they need to question, rather, is the try that was scored by the Argentinian on the left wing who was a, a direct opposition to uh, Jesse Creel. Let's speak a little bit now about the, the world rankings. And yeah. it's something that I want to chat uh, more about because uh, the loss to Argentina, along with important wins uh, for Australia and Ireland, have contributed to the look of the current standings, which uh, came out yesterday. Yeah. Now, the world rankings were introduced before the 2003 World Cup, and then the box were ranked sixth in the world. This time in 2007, in the build-up to the World Cup, that the team actually won. They were ranked fourth in the world. And ahead of the 2011 World Cup, where South Africa fell out in the quarterfinal stage, they were ranked third in the world. So this is what it looks like now, with South Africa building up towards the World Cup. How worried should we be by this? Very worried. In fact, uh, we, should, we should have sleepless nights going forward. You've got to remember that just earlier on in the year, uh, you know, a beautiful article from an Irish newspaper. Uh, one of the writers uh, stated clearly that South Africa are one of the tournament's favourites, along with uh, New Zealand and England. But now, as things stand, after the three, I mean, in fact, the four consecutive, consecutive losses, I mean, it looks uh, doom and gloom for South Africans if they look at that. I mean, to lie number five, you know, with just after a week where you were lying number two, going into a World Cup, which is just a month away, uh, you know, it's just for me, I think it's scandalous where we are. And I think, you know, South African rugby and also the South African management have got to look themselves in the mirror and saying, are we doing enough? Does uh, Heineke Mayer need more in terms of uh, advisors in the team going forward? I mean, if you remember Jake White brought in Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones did wonders, you know, despite, uh, you know, there were sort of, uh, you know, negative comments from Saro management where they didn't allow him to, to get a Springbok blazer. But what he came for, he did the job 100% and we're victorious in France. And ahead of that World Cup, we were ranked fourth in the world. 
Certainly. I mean, you do need also, you know, I think positive energy within the side. I mean, you quite uh, also read reports about, uh, you know, black players, players of color not being happy. Yes, they've been isolated. Yes, they see themselves as token, you know, a tokenism within the squad, meaning that this is not a happy family, meaning that there's a lot of favoritism within the family. I mean, in any family, everyone, it's difficult. It's a lot of squad, 44 players in the squad. You can't keep them happy, but at least you've got to be fair as a coach and give people, you know, enough opportunity to showcase. For example, Heineke Meyer finds himself in such a win-win situation that the team only leaves on Thursday. This was pre-planned because he had thought that he would trounce Argentina in Durban, take a break in Durban is what they are doing now. But now they had a training, they leave on a Thursday, meaning they'll be on a flight, arrive there the same day, late at night, have a captain's run and then meet up with the Argentinians who are already in, in Argentina, who have the whole nation behind them. And, uh, you know, it's just lost Pumas all the way. And I think we're going to have a really torrid time. Remember Argentina, throughout the four years that they've been involved in the rugby championship, they've targeted one team, and that was South Africa. And finally, they won us uh, last weekend uh, on Saturday. Tano, I want to speak about what has come out now. Um, South African Rugby Union are defending the criticism that's been leveled against them by uh, Kasatu. Um, do, do you know of the players that have that have gone to Kasatu to bring up the debate of, of, of transformation? And you know, is it is it a really really valid one? And 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 just how difficult is this kind of discussion now with the World Cup less than forty days away? Look, it's interesting you bring that point. If I can take you back to 1995, we had a situation, Kitch Christie uh, quit his job uh, in front of the then late Louis Late, where there was a lot of rumours that uh, he's got to bring in an asporter to come in prior to the World Cup. In 99, you had a Nick Mallet who dropped Gary Tachman for Bobby Skinstead, you know, a captain who didn't do anything. You go into 2003, you have a start, a uh, Carl Trump. Uh, you had, you know, the, the coach then, you had a Gio Cronier and Quentin David saga. In 2007, I mean, the coach nearly lost his job. That is Jake White. In 2011, even there was also coach for Peter De Villiers then, just a year ago, he wanted to chase Dick Muir and Gary Gould. And this year around, we still speak about transformation. For, for me, what it means, it means simply that we, we haven't started you know, there's a lot of, I mean, I remember you had the transformation strategic plan in studio with the then CEO, Yuri Ru. I mean, he came here. I mean, who, who, who is Saru bluffing? You cannot bluff people in South Africa. Mm -hmm. People have got eyes and ears and they know and they can see. I mean, for example, two weeks ago, you, you bring in a Lionel Mapu in the last two minutes. That's tokenism in front of the whole world. And uh, I think we, we, we've, got, we've got a situation where I think South Africans and also South African people, they need to embrace transformation. We need to see a, a, a team that when we go to the World Cup, we're going to wear the box jerseys on Fridays. People are not going to wear those box in, in terms of they protesting because not enough has been given, not opportunities are given enough to the other players within the yeah. squad. So I think it's a big problem. And also I think the sports ministry, for him to be tweeting that, he needs to get down to work and he needs to make sure that because he's brought these things. I mean, we had an election in the country and he brought transformation. He brought 50%, 60%. But now you find him quiet when it comes to, you know, to a situation where he's got to be vocal and he's got to meet up with the coaches and saying this is, this is this needs to happen. He's not doing that. You cannot tweet. You either do things or you don't do things. Yeah, I mean, the, the other problem is, is that we should actually be having these discussions for the four years in between and yeah. actually doing stuff in the four years in between the World Cup. So by the time that we get to this point, it's not something that we're focused on, but it's a team that we can, like you say, get behind. And also it is a family. It is a happy family, all as one team representing the entire nation. I just I, it always kind of feels difficult to be speaking about this with the World Cup so close yeah. and you just think, you know, where was everybody's attention in the four years prior to this? The transformation uh, debate is really one that we need to have a lot longer. So unfortunately, we've run out of time. But thank you very much for coming in. The transformation you. and, you know, what's actually happening, the criticisms that are being leveled against uh, the South African Rugby Union is something that we will discuss a little bit more. Thank you very much. Tando Manana, he is a rugby analyst and a former player himself. This is just the first of what will be a series of rugby focused interviews in the build up to the 2015 Rugby World Cup right here on Morning Live and that's going to be happening every Tuesday. It's time now for the show to take a break. Stay with us.